Sally, let me pass on to you. Um, from the Disasters Emergency Committee side, you know, I think primarily you've been uh, uh, for, for a long period interested in channeling uh, you know, UK resources to uh, humanitarian emergencies and crises. What's your perspective been of the trends in the last 20 years? And I do you know, wonder where you see DRR in the kind of the wider interests of, of your group and of humanitarian assistance. Thank you. Thank you. Just, just move the mic. Thank you, Tom. Uh, firstly, I want to uh, thank Jan and the wider ODI team for great work they've done on, on the report, and it's obviously a, an important uh, report going forward. Um, we very much welcome this report at the DEC and its recommendations. In fact, our experience from supporting our member agencies on the ground during large emergencies would probably indicate to us that we'd probably even go further than some of the suggestions and recommendations made in the report. But let me first of all start by uh, just telling you a little bit about the DEC and our role in terms of uh, disaster risk reduction. We obviously uh, support our member agencies and work with our media partners to raise... Uh, sorry, is that better? Okay, we obviously work with our media partners and our member agencies to raise money after an emergency or during an emergency. And we're good at that. And the reason why we're good at that is that we've managed to build good trust amongst the British public and our media partners to enable us to do that. And we also guarantee a high degree of transparency from the organisation and from the member agencies that support the work. Only a very small part of our member agencies' work funded by the DEC actually goes on standalone disaster risk reduction. But quite a high degree of uh, funds go into disaster response and disaster preparedness. For example, our work in Haiti uh, after the uh, earthquake there recently, uh, our members not only ensured, of course, that the buildings that they worked on uh, were resilient to future, future shocks, but the local population were trained on how to ensure that they, those skills uh, are passed on to friends and neighbours, ensuring uh, that they're able to use local resources and local materials to better protect themselves for future shocks. The report recognises, we feel, um, and we agree wholeheartedly, that DRR should not uh, compete with disaster uh, aid and response, but actually complements it. And we've seen that a high degree of our uh, resources from the, from the DEC that goes to member agencies now forms an integral part, uh, the DRR forms an integral part of disaster response with the member agencies. Previously, it would have been common for international NGOs to have kept disaster response and development separately from each other, managed separately. And that's rapidly changing now. M many successful INGOs are actually looking at integrated approaches of which DRR is actually a, a mainstreamed way of working. It's also encouraging, Jan, to see that uh, the successor, hopefully, to the uh, NG at MDGs actually recognises that uh, disaster res uh, the, the effects of disasters <coughs> are obviously keeping people in poverty and that DR is an important uh, uh, element of that going forward. In the last eight years, we have seen five mega disasters. The tsunami, the two earthquakes, one in Kashmir, one in Haiti, uh, recently the uh, East Africa uh, uh, drought, and in response to that, we've actually seen a historic and mega response in the UK from the British public, where in total we have raised over £708 million pounds for those uh, uh, crises. And I think there is obviously a huge responsibility on us as the DEC and our member agencies to burden and, and shoulder a, a, a large responsibility in ensuring that more resources and priority is given to disaster uh, risk uh, reduction. But thankfully, as I mentioned, that is changing, and we have seen that our recent um, uh, disaster risk reduction reports that we do, both for uh, the tsunami in, in, in the Asian tsunami and the Pakistan floods, have shown that there's been good progress being made in this regard. But we've also seen that actually that uh, governments could do a lot more as well in terms of disaster risk reduction. And a good example of that is Pakistan, where plans are in place, but unfortunately there's lacking in terms of will uh, uh, coordination uh, to make that happen. The importance 
of mainstreaming uh, DRR is enshrined actually in our accountability framework and our member agencies have to demonstrate that commitment and how they put it into practice on a regular uh, basis. So we do recognise that governments are primarily responsible uh, for D DRR and not specifically obviously during an emergency or after an emergency but of course before. So we welcome this report and in particular we, we, we feel that there is a huge role now that the international community and, and, and organisations, of course, like the DC member agencies, in advocating for greater DRR and greater funding uh, of those poorer countries that you mentioned, Jan. The report also highlights, and I'm glad that you focused on the presentation there, the inequities that we've seen, where the poorer countries are obviously getting less uh, DRR uh, support. And, you know, we all have a role in it ensuring that this inequity, inequity is addressed. So we feel that this is also a development agenda as well as an advocacy, advocacy agenda. Take East Africa, for example, in um, the drought in 2011. Um, in fact, the funds for the DEC has only just been spent um, in the last year or so altogether. As quickly as our members uh, switched from distributing trucking aid, for example, trucking water, uh, distributing food, they switched from sustainable farming techniques and ensuring uh, that the communities are able to better deal with drought in the future. But ultimately, uh, the vulnerability here is systemic. Poor and, poor and marginalised communities are left exposed uh, to the risk of recurring drought year after year. The DR report we commissioned after the 2010 Pakistan flip reports also highlighted this. One of the main recommendations of the Pakistan DRR report was therefore to focus on policy and advocacy work to influence the government to ensure they took steps to protect communities. So I would suggest in response to today's report that this policy and advocacy work in relation to D DRR by NGOs needs to extend to the international donors. We must do our part not only to ensure that funding is increased internationally, but to recognise the pressure will be required to ensure the funds are allocated to the poorest countries and ensure that the recipient governments pursue disaster restriction in ways that reduce risks for the poorest and most vulnerable of communities. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Zaleh.